I struggle to find or meet people that are genuinely evil. There's people that have got goals and then they're kind of um, uh, risky and uh, frivolous en route toward getting those goals. And you think, ah, oh, this is just collateral damage. Who really cares? I'm getting my backhander from Raytheon or mm. whoever the fuck. But it seems surprising to me that someone would think, I want to go to war. So do you think that these people that are pushing for it genuinely believe that it's in the best interests of the country? Have they been able to gaslight themselves, this Stockholm syndrome from whoever is sort of continuing to fund them? Or is it something a little bit more malicious? Are they actually sort of trying to land grab or, or this sort of odd power game that imagine? I imagine it feels powerful for you to be America and for you to have a foothold here and have a foothold there? Have you got any idea what kind of motivates these people? I think they tell themselves whatever they need to tell themselves to sleep at night. But as someone who's been, you know, I still serve in the army today. I've been deployed to war zones in different parts of the world, uh, seeing and experiencing firsthand the the harsh ugliness and realities of war and the costs. Um, the people who are so quick to go to war and see that as the first response rather than the last. Uh, number one, they they don't have any excuse. I, I I don't believe everybody should. You know, it's mandatory to serve them. I'm not. I I I don't advocate for that. But you you if you are in a position to make these decisions about war and peace, you need to be very responsible and do your due diligence to actually truly understand what the consequences of those decisions will be. Might be worth a quick visit to the front lines, maybe. Uh, they do those all the time for photo ops. I, I saw this while I, while I was deployed, and I've, I've seen a bunch even when I was in Congress for eight years where, you know, they'll go and they'll do like, we'll stop here in this war zone for 12 hours and hop off the, the private plane and take some quick photos and, you know, wear your flak vest and the, and the helmet, um, you know, for the picture. But it's, you know, it, it's visually impressive, but like I realistically suppose. unimpressed. Yeah, I mean, it looks really goofy to me, but, you know, for them, it tells a good story. Perhaps pick apart I've where they are. To, I've heard that, like, I've been to Iraq 27 times. It's like, okay. like The air-conditioned jet wasn't And the, yet, yeah. and yet, even those who are saying this are some of the very same people who are saying, like, we should just go bomb this country to smithereens. Like, okay, like, there, there's maybe a really prob a real big problem that we're dealing with here, but is that really is that really the right answer? Is that the best answer? What what happens as the second and third and fourth order of effects after we do what you're proposing? Uh, what will the costs and consequences be again in human lives and economy and in all of these other ramifications that a responsible leader should be considering before you go and advocate for such a serious thing? So it seems like you've got Democratic Party not happy with Trump generally. Uh, some factions of the Republican Party not happy with Trump, so it seems like you know. And Nikki Haley, you know, just to put a name to Nikki Haley is is one of kind of the the figureheads of that faction within the Republican Party. Mm. So Nikki Haley is driving forward this neocon, yeah, very much so, warmongering. Yeah, how come she's still there? Because there are people with a lot of money uh, who make money from that position or supporting that position. And they see, again, They, I, I don't know what they tell themselves to be able to sleep at night and be comfortable with what they're doing, mm. but um, they, they have convinced themselves that this is the way things should be. That's what makes me think that uh, it is self-conviction as opposed, or self-conviction as opposed to uh, leading this sort of double life where you know that it's wrong and then you go out front because the level of certainty that you need to be able to step out in front of the camera and we should do this, we need to do that. You go home and you drink yourself into a hole because there would be, for me, the, uh, you know, just straight up multiple personality disorder that I'd have to go through would break my brain in half. I don't think that- Because you're a good person. <laughs> well, other people would, would disagree. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like, it's just- but it's like okay, well, I, I get what you're, I get what you're, what you're driving at, and and you know, like okay, well, how do you define someone who was evil or driven by evil mm -hmm. intent? 
Uh, I would argue that that even if there's not like some Jekyll and Hyde situation going on, uh, I would define that evil intent as someone who cares more about their position, their political position or their power or their influence. Mm. Uh, and 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 I definitely in certain cases, and this is why Kamala Harris would be so dangerous as president and commander in chief, because I have no doubt in my mind she would immediately feel the need to exert strength and mm. to assert her position and prove that she is a truly strong and powerful commander in chief of the United States of America's military. And what better way to do that? What more effective way to do that than to actually use our military and go out and and uh, you know com- commit an act of of war. So that sort of need to prove yourself makes you quite easy to manipulate in some yes. ways. It makes you fragile. Yes, especially when you have so many interests. And this is not new. This is you know you heard Eisenhower warn about the military industrial complex and their influence and their cozy relationship with members of Congress. You go back to President John F. Kennedy and his brother Bobby Kennedy who were battling against even four-star generals and civilians who were beating the war drum saying, go to war, go to war, go to war. Uh, You know, President Kennedy's compelling speech at American University about peace and the hard work that it takes towards peace was the pushback against that. And that, that that doesn't only exist today. It's far more... Uh, far more powerful today than even it was back then. 